Hi everybody, Shane R. Monroe here, and you know what GeForce Now Ready to Play is, but what about Install to Play? What's that all about? And what's more, what is this persistent storage that they're trying to sell you? All this and more coming up, stick around. Let's go. So I've got the GeForce Now client running on Windows. So this is the thick client version. I'm just going to make this full screen. So if you're used to GeForce Now, I'm, I'll do a quick little summary here. So essentially everything in your Steam library, your uh, Ubisoft library, your EA library, provided that the publisher says it's okay, that means not all of the games, but most of the games will come up. Um, your library can now be streamed onto whatever device you want using the power of NVIDIA hardware. All right, there's multiple tiers. Every tier gets a little bit better as you go, blah, blah, blah. All right, so, but that's not the point of this video. Once you're in your library, you can see that uh, my library consists of 403 games of the supported 4,894 4, games. All of these games on this screen are compatible in one way or the other with GeForce Now. This is where it starts to get confusing. So I'm gonna filter and go to types. Now there's ready to play and there's install to play. What's the difference? And if you go digging around, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm going to filter on ready to play first. Now watch my game count, 403. Now I'm down to 333. So ready to play games are available on any tier, but install to play is not available on the low or free tier. So I lost, what, 100 games? Not quite 100 games, 80 games I lost because they are obviously 70 games install to play. So what is the, what's the difference? So ready to play is just like what you would expect with GeForce Now. NVIDIA has these games, all the games you see in Ready to Play, these games all exist in a little virtual machine somewhere. They're already installed, they're already patched, they're already updated, they're literally ready to play. They're still streaming, right? Both of these types are streaming, but Ready to Play means that NVIDIA's done all the work. They uh, have made sure it's up to date, they ensure a good experience, that's why not every game's available, along with the publisher restrictions, of course. But what about install to play? So ready to play means it's included in your fee, your monthly fee. If I go to ready to play, you'll see something sort of similar about all these games. A lot of them are indie games. A lot of them are lower tier games. Games that NVIDIA has permission from the publisher to let you stream but they don't want to, they want to wipe their hands of it because maybe these games don't run well. Maybe these games have not been vetted for the GeForce Now service. There's a million reasons why games might appear here. Probably because some of these games, you know, uh, well, uh, Ballionaire is pretty big, but I don't know. Pick one of these weird Dogfight 1942. Probably not a lot of call for that. And somebody has to maintain these ready to play games but nobody's maintaining any of this. Not really, there's an entry and that's about it. So let me show you how this works. Essentially, I'll go to, let's see, I'll take Dangerous Golf. Right now, I have 100 gigabytes available of storage. You can see that right here. 100 gigabytes available of installable space. So yes, essentially what you're doing is you're renting a PC with all the bells and whistles of NVIDIA. You're renting a PC in the cloud for your personal use. Nobody else will be using this one other than you. Okay, go on, very interesting. So um, let's take a look at how this works. Now, there is no cloud sync here. This is important. Your single session storage, which is what you get for free, with the paid tiers, you get single session storage. When you're done with the session, everything is deleted, including those game saves if there's no cloud sync. Keep that in mind. Also, if you install workshop mods, yes. Whereas in an NVIDIA ready to play session, there may be no mods allowed. 
but on your own install to play session or your single session storage, kind of do what you want. But let's take a look at it in action. It'll make a lot more sense. Now, of course, they automatically offer you to upgrade your storage. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's do the install. Oh, wait a minute. Did I uh, click the wrong thing? I must have clicked magic. Oh, there we go. Dangerous golf. 100 gigabytes available. Six, gigab uh, six gigabytes downloads. I don't think this game is that big. No cloud support. It's unverified. Maybe, maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't work. See what I mean? They don't have to expend a lot of concern about these games. All right. So if we hit install, here's where the ask comes and where the upsell comes. Try this install to play game with single session storage, which means, again, you leave the session. It's dead, gone, and buried. Remember, ready to play stuff is already queued up. It can take a long time each single session for you to install a large game. This is a tiny game. But if you have a really big game, every single session that you use could take forever to set up. Keep that in mind. So 100 gigabytes is how much space I have, right? So you couldn't, I couldn't install Call of Duty 6 on my single session storage. Keep that in mind. Data save is game dependent. No cloud save, you're going to lose your data. Now, of course, upgrade to one terabyte of storage. That's room for a lot of games, folks. One time install. That means after you install the game, it's on your one terabyte persistent storage. And da uh, da uh, data save always guaranteed. I don't know why they name it that way. That just doesn't sound right. So what does it cost? Because you know it's going to cost you. All right, so if I open up the browser, here is what it will cost me if I want to get permanent persistent storage. There you go. One terabyte of persistent storage is eight bucks a month. That's kind of not bad. If, if you think about it holistically, right, you're getting your own virtual machine in the cloud powered by NVIDIA hardware, eight bucks a month. Of course, you're paying for your regular GeForce Now subscription on top of that. Right, keep that in mind. 500 gigabytes for uh, of persistent storage for five bucks a month or 200, which would be enough for Call of Duty uh, and maybe a few other games, 299 per month. So that's, that's kind of not bad. I mean, it's, it's grotesque, uh, nickel and diming you, but it's kind of cool. All right, so uh, we did not upgrade our storage. Let's see what it looks like with our single session and see if it looks any different. We're gonna go ahead and continue. Now, remember, if you regularly play GeForce Now games, what would be happening now is they would be getting your sessions set up and connecting you to a pre-built, prefabricated virtual machine of the game of your choice, right? Whatever game. You're playing Marvel Rivals. That machine already exists. It's up to date. Everything's good. This is a brand new, fresh VM that they're putting up for us right now, virtual machine. We're going to get logged in. They're going to grab your user data. Last time I saw this screen come up, it hung. So hopefully that's not the case. I guess they're still um, ironing some bugs out. Of oh, nope, there it goes. So it's a real Steam client on a real virtual machine. So it looks like Steam. It's got your friends like Steam, right? Um, and then it automatically says, oh, you need to install it. Yeah, you're not playing the game yet. You got to install it first. So it got your VM ready. Now you got to install it guess I jumped the gun a little bit. So I have 98.8 gigabytes free. I got plenty of space for this little guy. It's only eight gigabytes. No problem. All right. So it actually does the install just like you were using real steam. Now <laughs> might be just a bit faster than you downloading it, but uh, yeah, you still have to download it. So I know what you're thinking. All right. I'm in my virtual machine. Can I, can I go install third-party mods? Can I bring up windows? Can I bring up something? No, <laughs> you're locked into the steam environment, right? So, uh, yes, your friends are here. Um, anything steam related is fine, but you'll see that there's no windows button. There's no way to download, op open a browser, download, you know, Wiimod or anything like that. No. So you're not really renting a full board computer. You're renting a steam machine in the cloud and you have drastic limitations on what you can do. This is eight gigs, folks, and we're still waiting. So this is how they entice you with the persistent storage, right? So if I install this now, when I close, I lose everything. 
If I had persistent storage, I only would have to install this once. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, God, so that's the only benefit is I get to keep the game. That doesn't seem right. It'd be faster and easier just to play the game streamed on ready to play, right? But not all games are there, right? So if you want to play one of these little guys like Dangerous Golf, you've got to do the install to play. And you can install more than one. That's that's the seller right there. So when you fire up your VM, you're not just firing up Marvel Rivals. Now you're firing up Dangerous Golf, Marvel Rivals, uh, Call of Duty 6. It really is a more, I own a computer in the cloud versus I can stream a game from the cloud. All right. So if you go to your library, you're probably thinking, oh, so I can just install Overwatch from here. Overwatch isn't supported, but I bet I can just install it from here, right? Well, you can't. They lock down your Steam library to only those titles. But so you can down, but look, it exposes all the other 69 games that um, you have access to. If I want to install Ballionaire, I can install it. If I want to install, these are all got to be little tiny guys, right? Another install. I can install all these games. Now, remember, I'm going to lose every one of these when I shut down my session because I only have single uh, session storage. But if I were to filter on installed locally, I got them all. All of these games are ready to play now. And they're going to stay that way if I had the persistent storage. So is it worth it? 500 gigabytes, or was it 200 gigabytes for three bucks extra a month? I bet there's a lot of people out there that would find that a good deal. Just have access to all of this stuff ready to play. Well, installed to play because ready to play is something else. It's very, very confusing. So yeah, so there you go. I mean, that's really the deal. Now, when I exit Steam, right? I had three games installed. As soon as I leave, they're gone. Dust in the wind. So because I really want to see what it looks like otherwise, obviously we know what it's going to look like, but let's do it anyway. I'm going to upgrade my storage and I'm going to take their... Uh, I'm going to take their uh, 200 uh, persistent here. And then you, oh, by the way, you can choose where you want to play, where, you know, where you're next to. Obviously, it's going to pick the best one for you. But if for some reason you are uh, maybe visiting friends in Texas or Oregon or something like that, you might want to hop in here and change that um, for when you go on vacation or whatever, right? So $2.99 the month, I'll continue to payment. I'm going to clip the video out and then I'll be back when my payment's complete. Well, I spent the last 20 minutes trying to upgrade to persistent storage. I'm sort of in a weird transition. I was in the ultimate bracket. I just downgraded back to founders, but I still have some of my ultimate left to burn off for the rest of the month. So I'm thinking that my account being in that weird hiatus is keeping me from upgrading to uh, the persistent storage. So maybe we'll do a follow-up. In the meantime, at least now you know what it is, how it works, what the benefits are, and if it applies to you. Listen, if you like what we're doing here, like, subscribe, hit the bell. You guys know what to do. I'm Shane R. Monroe. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.